videos and therefore talking about development roads in Pakistan. Uh, alhamdulillah, uh, it's very difficult to talk about Pakistan when I have three giants in knowledge, not in, in size. But uh, <laughs> and uh, so I will talk briefly about uh, Pakistan. My dreams for Pakistan started more than 25 years ago. And one of the dreams to work in an area called West, West, Northwest Frontier. This was my dream. Second area is Kashmir, because it's a, a war zone. Third area is Balochistan. Thank you. No, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about in 1980s, early 90s. This was my dream at that time. And let me say that the importance of Pakistan, not only for UK, but for Europe and for America, because of the diaspora input as a community of creating many organizations, many, many humanitarian organizations, was in America or in Europe as a whole, particularly in UK. Credit goes to Asian community, particularly Pakistani community, of the creation of Islamic relief. If anybody deny that, I will stand up, actually, for that because of the contribution, because, and this was at a time when there's nobody from the Muslim community, what is the impact or if the value of humanitarian response more than 35 years ago. Uh, Pakistan has got a lot of human resources and we should invest in them. We should treat them as jewels, not as a recipient a country or a poor country. The intelligence, not the intelligence, I mean the, the level of intelligence يعني, uh, is, is incredible. I can see in those young people here and there how they create opportunity from nothing. And this is what actually we need to focus on Pakistan, not to keep talking about Pakistan as a country which was as a big X mark on it, which is wrong. Pakistan could be one of the leading countries that actually bring peace, not only to the region there, but to the whole world as well. This is my relationship with Pakistan over the last 35 years since I started to understand or to learn uh, what humanitarian response is about. Talking about the diaspora of the Pakistani or Asian community, I was remembering a lot of things happening. And I will read some of the communique between us and the others. As I said, for the creation of a humanitarian sector in this country, credit goes to the Asian community, particularly to Pakistani community. No doubt. I'm not joking. I am not joking and I'm not blinking. I'm not saying this because I'm here, because people come from Pakistan, because I lived it at that time. At that time, I remember 7-7 uh, and uh, September 11 and all these sort of things. And with the development of the sector in this country, we managed after September 11 to raise our voices high, not as one organization, but to the collective. And I was reading a letter which has been written 18 years ago about the agony that we are all facing as an institution in UK, particularly the Muslim institution in UK, not only about a one country or two countries or three countries. And this letter was written on 28th of May, 2004, to the Right Honorable Prime Minister of UK, Tony Blair. I'm not going to read all of it, but I'm just reading the power of the community which empowered somebody like us to be able to write to the PM at the very critical time after September 11th. I'm writing to you today to try to raise awareness about something which I and my others like me, and many others like me, feel is causing widespread confusion. 2004, within the Muslim and non-Muslim world alike, I'm taking, I'm talking, of the status of Islamic charities, 
and the ways in which many governments throughout the world have sought to isolate, restrict, and in some extreme cases, actually close them down. This was the message of us here 15 years ago, and this should not be the message today, because today we should be empowering the local community, should be talking about building bridges between us and Pakistan, between us, Afghanistan, between us and any part of the world, because we are global players as well as global leaders. You see? This is, I believe, something which I potentially, I potentially, which is potentially the greatest threat to humanitarian work and has hugely negative impact on the war against terror. You know the impact of the community here, which sometimes we look at them as they speak Urdu, or they are not qualified enough. 15, 20 years ago, we were standing together to tell the whole world. And this letter was not only sent to Tony Blair, George Bush, I don't know who was, was the president of France at that time, everywhere, everywhere, globally, to say we are building an institution to say that we are here, have to work together with governments, have to work together with universities, academia, have to work together with another institution in the country because we know the know-how and will be able to deliver in the most difficult area, we reach the unreachable and our challenge to reach the unreachable and to let the deaf to be able to listen to what we say and the blind to see our action and even the crippled ones will be able to elevate us. This is the conviction of the, our work as Asian community, as Pakistani community, as in this long way of building this humanitarian movement. I remember in 7-7, 7, 7, 7, 7 which is 2005, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Academia. Yes. 2005. At that time, there was a statement delivered by somebody, without mentioning who the name of somebody, because we don't worship individuals. We have managed, give my hand to your hand, we have managed to build a humanitarian movement. Now it is a time to build social movement, which is more difficult to build than humanitarian movement. And we're still struggling. And we want you to help us, we want you to help us, and want you, Sister Aisha, to help us as well. I'm pointing to the three of you because you are the three stars of today's... No, I'm serious. I mean it. I, I mean it, and I'm, I'm bowing down to the knowledge on the table by the three of you. It's, very, it's a shame for me to speak in their presence. I should not have started this speech. I should have listened to you to take notes and actually to build my speech through your, your notes. This is our mission nowadays. Our mission is to empower here as an institution the 50% plus of young people of Pakistan, which are more than 107 million young, talented, talented, talented people. If we don't empower them, if we don't educate them, if we don't build their capacity, and treat them with respect, somebody else will take them to make the scene of what they can do with young people nowadays. This is our message to our government. This is our message to our institution. This is our message to our local organization here and the international community as well, if we can talk together collectively. This letter did not, the issue in this letter, still on the table. Don't call me terrorist. Don't call me extremist. Don't call me radical. Because there's some so-called charitable think tank is tarnishing a lot of Muslim charities here. We have to tell them by nicely or to stand up together, tell them, listen, we have the right of citizenship of our country and we are contributing to the development of UK and Europe and the global uh, humanitarian movement as you are, don't tarnish people. Don't call them names. Don't step on their feet because we have a role to play 
and to play this role effectively, dynamically, and with an impact on the global humanitarian movement. I wouldn't talk too much today about anything else, about from have to work together. Have to work together for <coughs> Pakistan, for Europe, for Britain, for the whole world. Not only for one country, but our mission is to work for humanity. I know that you are eager to stop me. I'm going to stop you. <laughs> stop now. <laughs> and we have to work together. Connectivity, collectivity, empowerment, transparency is the names of our slogans. We should not worship the logo. We should not worship our ego. But we should worship the creator of all of us who is us to become together as one ummah. Diverse ummah is the ummah which includes Muslims, non-Muslims, Christian, Jewish, others under the same uh, uh, platform. May Allah bless you all. Jazakumullah khair. And I'm very honored and privileged to be there. But I apologize again for the three of you. Because I need to listen to you to learn more and more and more today. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Dr. Rahani.